Hi everybody, it's Sam Mixup Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I have got this really fun impossible card to show you. Um, now I think this is just kind of starting to pop up because I saw this on the Trimcraft um, blog last week and um, I haven't seen it anywhere else. Um, so this is what I'm going to show you. Now the reason it's called an impossible card is because if you look at it closely it's made from one piece of card but there's this gap here and there's a gap here but then look at the big bit of card on the back and that's part of the same white card. So it plays with your eyes, it's rather clever this one and I showed the plain piece of card to my husband and he kept saying, no, you must have stuck two pieces together. And then when I showed him how you do it, it is very, very easy. So this is the one I've done here, that's the back there and it folds completely flat and it fits in the biggest envelope on the envelope um, scoreboard which I'll grab in a minute. The largest size that you can get, I think it's eight and a half by six and a half, um, that will fit inside. So that's how it looks when you obviously pull it out of the envelope and then it will come up because it's folded from that side and then folded from this side so it naturally wants to go into that middle position, that upright position. So yeah, so that's what we're going to make. So let's crack on. So you only need, this is, I've done this with a five by seven piece of playing card. Um, but once you know how to do it, you can change your sizes. You could go small, you could do six by six, all kinds of sizes. It's entirely up to you. So what you want to do first of all is grab, um, just looking around for my ruler, I seem to have misplaced that one, so I will use this one. Okay, so you've got a piece of five by seven cardstock, okay? And what you want to do is along the bottom here, you want to come in at one and a half inches. So come in one and a half and just put a little pencil mark and again, one and a half pencil marks. You should be scoring at one and a half and at, sorry, scoring, just mark a pencil mark at one and a half and five and a half. Then rotate it all the way around so you've got the other long side facing you. And on this side, you want to mark at seven, and um, along the seven inch side, you want to mark it three and a half. So just halfway. Okay, so if I just bring this one up, just put a pencil mark there at three and a half. And then these, those two pencil marks that are coming in from one and a half on each side. Then on the short side, you want to mark at halfway. So it's five inches in width. So you want to mark at two and a half. And again, at two and a half on the other side. Okay, and then you're just going to join that up. If you've got a T ruler, I keep telling myself I need to get one, then you can just do that. You don't need to mark both ends. There you go, and just join those up like so. Then what we're going to do is mark from where we've just done the one and a half inch one there, you're just gonna join it up to that middle pencil mark. And again, keeping all your lines nice and straight, which is why if you've got a T ruler, it'd be much easier. But I'm eyeballing this and also using my grid mat just to make sure I'm getting it exact. And then this one, you're just going like so. So you can see now what I've done. So that's that middle pencil mark, which was the two and a half inch and then just bring up where you've done each of those markers just to the middle line on each side. Then the very center piece, so from this school line, this pencil mark, I'm so used to working with school lines, not pencil lines, this pencil line to this pencil line, you're just gonna score in that middle line. This will just help you when you go to fold it, I think anyway. Okay. And now what we want to do is um, grab some scissors. I'm gonna use um, so we're doing lots of crafting today. Now I don't, I don't like those. I'm going to use these ones. That's fine. And what you're going to do is just cut up. So this middle line here, I'm just going to cut all the way up to the middle, like so. Then rotate it, and again, just cut up both of those pencil marks just to the middle main pencil mark like so okay then while it's all still flat i'm just going to grab my rubber and just go over there and just rub out all of those pencil marks because it's easier to do this while it's all still nice and flat like so okay so now that is what you will have. Now, 
really, really easy part is you're just going to bring, so on this case, I'm going to bring this side, bring it all the way over like so and just fold it so it's nice and straight. I need to cut down, I didn't cut right up to that pencil mark. Just see there, there we go. And bring it right over so that all your score lines match up. So we just folded that one over and just burnished it. This one you're going to fold that way. And again, burnish. And now we've created that impossible card. So let me just show you again. So that's the card flat. That's where we just cut there and cut here. We're basically just bringing this one and flipping it under. So just pull it right the way around and then this piece will just be here like this. But then you want to burnish that and then burnish that one as well. And now you've got it. So it really does, it's a really good card. It just plays with your, your, your mind and to someone that you're giving that to, when they look at it, they'll be like, how the hell have they done that? Because yeah, like my husband said, he thought it was two pieces stuck together, but it's not. So again, one more time, that's it all completely flat, lined up. You're just bringing this one under, or you can bring that one under. It really doesn't matter. You can see there if I do it that way, it does it the same as well. But either one of these, just bring it towards you like that. Just flip it around. Okay, so now we've got the fun part of decorating it. So just keep that to one side. And then what I've done here is you are going to need two pieces. So I've got these two pieces to kind of map the bottom first. Now these measure at um, three and a quarter by four and three quarters. Okay, that's the plane. Then the pattern, these pieces measure at three by four and a half. Okay, now what you want to do is I've already pen put pencil marks on two of these. In order to get them, obviously you need that kind of, um, it's like an L shape um, in whatever card it is that you're using. So again, just with my ruler here, with one of the bigger pieces, the bigger mat, you basically want to do a pencil mark along the long side from the bottom coming up at two and a quarter. Okay, so just put a little pencil mark there. Then along the top, coming in from, I'm doing the right hand side here, you want to mark at two and one eighth of an inch. A little pencil mark. Oh, so you can see there I've done a pencil mark, that's the two and one eighth. And then this one here was the two and, what did I say that one was? Two and a quarter. Okay, and then you're just going to join them up. So you want to draw down a pencil mark down to that one. Okay, you can rubble this out just lightly and then across like that. So you're just drawing a, just like a, a larger L, like so. Because now you can cut this piece right out, like so. And then with your other piece, the same matte piece of paper or card, just line it all up perfectly and then just, you can either trace around it with pencil, I'm just going to cut straight into it like so. Again, making sure that they stay nice and straight, like so. So then that one there, I just need to rub off that pencil mark. And now I've got they will fit nicely in there to give you a nice white frame, okay? So that's that one and that one. And then it was the same with the patterned, which is gonna go over the top. So coming up from the bottom on the long side, it is two inches. And then coming along from the top here, it was two and one eighth of an inch. So again, I've just joined up the two there. And again, you can then just cut in, make sure it's all nice and straight. Because this is stripy paper as well, I can see where I need to. And then obviously, because this is directional, I've got one that's going that way and then one that's gonna be this way. So I'm gonna turn it upside down. And then again, just cut down this one and then this one's straight down that white piece so I can just make sure I get it all nice and neat. There we go. So now these will neatly sit over the top 
of those bigger ones like so okay so I'm gonna go and get these all stuck okay, so down they're all done so now one can go on there and one can go on there like so and you can see how that's all coming together also if you if it's gone so I've got the left one facing with the elf looking like an L shape and this one's an upside down L you have it <clears throat> that way and you've cut these out and you think oh no I've done them the wrong way all you've got to do is just flip it around like so okay so it will always work so don't worry if you do because I've done that before on the other one and I thought oh no I've cut them all wrong but all you have to do is just flip it around so now I'm going to stick them onto the main piece there I'm just using my um, okay. double sided tape so that is now all ready so I have with that one there I've done this kind of square um, scallops uh, nest framelits that I die cut my sentiment from but I like it but I'm, I wasn't so keen so I think I'm going to stick with just a nice rectangle so this one here is from my nest of just normal rectangle um, framelits and it's four and a half by three and one eighth and then I done the next one down from that same nest which is um, two and three quarters by um, four and a quarter but I basically done it all around this sentiment and this one is from I did have it oh it's here um, this is a dovecraft just a nice big happy birthday sentiment so I really liked that one so I'm gonna mount this oh, I done it on that side I didn't like it um, not the right color so I'm just gonna pop some um, foam um, little squares on here just to lift it up um, because I'm going to be sticking all of my little leaves and things um, all kind of underneath and around it. So I'm just going to stick it on this green piece. Okay, and then that will sit on this here. I'm going to have it completely flush with the bottom. So you can see that it's completely flush. There's the white background. I've got it right down to the bottom there. Because so I'm going to build up all around this. And you can see on the back there it looks nice and neat as well. So I'm going to just put some double-sided tape across this whole white piece okay, here. So now that's all nicely stuck down there. And you can see it all looks nice from the front as well. And now I need to start decorating it. So oh, also I've got this strip here. So you don't need it. It was just something that they did do on theirs. I guess it's for, I mean, if someone's pulling it out of the envelope there, you've got this kind of plain space. And it was nice because I was able to put this piece here on there, the flower. So that's why I'm using it again. But I don't know whether to use some plain. Um, just trying to think whether to use some plain. I'm going to put a strip of this same kind of pinky colour through the middle there. And then I'm going to have this flower like so. And then I've got toucan that I've fussy cut and then I've fussy cut all of these leaves as well here and some more flowers. So I am gonna stick all this all down. This strip is a piece of three quarters of an inch by six, I believe, yeah. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put another thin strip through. So I'm gonna go and do all that up because that's relatively easy and I'll talk you through it all okay, in a minute. Okay, so there you have it. How cool does that look? Absolutely love this. Um, so I've done a little um, cluster of um, leaves and flowers there. Now I've done the die cut all of the flowers from this um, plate here that I've got. I'll share all the links to that. And then the leaves were just from the um, Stamping Up um, Eclectic Layers Thin Lips. Um, so I've done a cluster there, I've done a flower there, and then on the bottom there I've done the flower with the leaves coming along there and I think that looks really nice. I was going to put some more embellishments on it but I think I'm just going to keep it blank. This here, um, all the papers that I've used are from the Tropicana paper pack. So it's actually the leftovers that I have from when I made my tall curved gift box last week. So it's just another one of the toucans. So actually that card would go really nice with that gift box. Um, so I might add this card onto that tutorial and vice versa, just because I think that makes quite a nice set. Um, and also another thing I've done as well is because the weight of this on here was starting to lean forward. So I've die cut the same size in the green here. I've die cut that in white and put it on the back and it's actually made it even more neater now and it's perfect there to write your sentiment. So that's what I'm gonna do with this one here because this one's really starting to lean. So I'm gonna just even it out and um, die cut this same in the pink square here, put it on the back and it just, although you could write a message there, I'm gonna do it again just so it's got even more room and it's strong. But that will all go now nice and flat 
in your envelope like so and then when they get it obviously it will pop up like so so you have it love it I really, really enjoyed making this one. So I hope you like this one. I hope I've inspired you. Um, I'll share all the links to everything as normal in my blog. Um, but until then, if you do enjoy it, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.